I'm Tim Foss and here's a pretty comprehensive guide to setting up your Sony Movie Studio or Sony Vegas for the ultimate quality on YouTube. In checking out what broadcasters are currently working to for YouTube, I've used that info to let you squeeze the last ounce of quality out of your high def YouTube videos. Before you start editing, set up the project properties first to match what you want to do. So go to AVHCD and for the US or uh, Japan NTSC world it's pretty simple if you've got Movie Studio 13 as there's a 1080 30p template. But for the rest of us we have to make our own. Select the 1920 by 1080 with a P for progressive. Give your project a name. Now you need to do a little bit of adjusting in project properties. Check the field order is set to non-progressive. Check the frame rate is right for you, 25 for PAL, 29.970 for NGSC. No, don't ask why it's not 30, life is just too short. Double check that full resolution rendering quality, which is Sony's internal rendering, is set to best. Now type in a new name for your template. Check the audio quality is right, 48K and 16-bit, and that resampling is set to best. If you're always going to use this setting, then click here and hit OK. Now you're set up. Import and edit your piece. Here's one I prepared earlier. It's all done and ready to make the file for uploading to YouTube. So let's start on the rendering settings. Type in your file name here and select the high quality template Internet HD 1080p to customize it. The frame size should be OK, but here's the first important change to make you want to make the profile set to high quality. Check the frame rate is right for your region here. And here's the other important part. Setting this to two pass variable bitrate means that the rendering has one pass to see what needs to be processed and the second pass to actually do the processing. The downside of this is by selecting two pass it will take literally twice as long to render but it won't make any difference to the file size. YouTube recommends a bitrate of 12 megabits a second for 1080p, so set the maximum to 24 and the average to 12 megabits. This protects the processing for very complex sequences without noticeably increasing the file size. If you've got OpenCL or CUDA, select it here to help speed up the processing. I'll show you how to check that in a second. We're in the home stretch now, so let's check the audio settings. Sample rate 48k and bitrate is selected 384 kilobits system format mp4 and check here for the GPU. Now give your rendering template a name. Rendering time is largely computer dependent and selecting all of these quality choices apart from the two pass will only marginally affect how long it takes. As it does take time it's an idea to process when you're not using the computer like overnight. If you're going to do that, you may need to disable your computer's automatic shutdown. In settings, put sleep to never, and remember to put it back to the original setting when it's all done. So, is the end result worth it? Well, after making all that effort to work in HD, and it's not costing you anything apart from your time, why wouldn't you? Does it really look any different? Well, you can judge. Here is some Sony high quality encoding test footage in good 1080p and in the Ultra Setup 1080p. Even after YouTube's transcoding, I think there's still noticeable improvements in detail and color rendering. There's a longer version of this test footage with 720p and 480p comparisons as well. See the link at the end. So, thanks for watching and the best of luck with your rendering.